Hi, everyone. Uh, you can all hear me OK? Perfect. Uh, so we're going to talk about XOS modules. Um, a little bit louder? Can I, like, can I bring this up? Hello? Uh-oh. We're not going to do like TikTok style, are we? Um, that was a mistake. Let's see. Maybe I can bring it down here. Because I can hear me better. How's that? I think that's a little louder. Um, yeah, so I'm Dan Baker. Um, my handle is Jaku or DJACU, uh, pretty much everywhere online. Um, I uh, help out with the marketing team. Uh, I'm a big user of Nix for the past couple of years. Uh, and if you're local and interested, uh, me and a couple of our buddies, uh, we run the SoCal Nix users group, which you can find at that link over there. Um, <laughs> uh, we have about 20 or so people uh, joining, and last, last meetup we had uh, 16 people show up. Uh, we have our next meetup next month, so if you're interested and want to come on by, uh, Catch us on Matrix. All the information on, is on the, uh, the website there. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to a couple of people. These guys uh, really, really helped out when I was preparing these slides. Uh, the whole, this entire uh, workshop is a bunch of lessons that are hosted on a website and in a GitHub repo where you can go and pull them or you can like follow the lessons online. Um, each one of these individuals contributed with feedback, helping with dry runs, helping with advice, uh, answering my questions about the module system. So, you know, big props to them. And um, so there's a couple of ways to find this. Um, the, this is the actual URL for the website. It's got a Hiragana TLD. Uh, not everyone has the capabilities to type that in the keyboard, so you can go to my profile here. And if you go to this link, which is on my README, uh, it might be a little hard to read right here, but if you go to my, uh, GitHub, there's a link in my uh, README profile, um, which will take you to the website. Uh, this is really hard to, is it really hard to read out there? No. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know what? We can make that better. Watch this. Ah! <laughs> Technology. Um, zoom in. All right. There we go. Uh, here we go. It is DJACU. Um, my, my buddy David has also set up this domain for the next year. Uh, you can go to nixmodules.dev. That'll redirect back to my website. Um, yeah, and if you go to the website, you can also just click on, I guess, probably any one of these links, and it'll take you back to uh, the repository. And you can check out that lesson and the source code for it. Um, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna look at this. Uh, I'm going to kind of follow this, uh, the kind of basic layout that's, that's written here for this, but um, I'm just going to do it all in uh, to the terminal so we can actually look at the next code, run the next code, um, and you don't have to just watch me read my website. Um, but if you want to follow along, it's on there. You can pull down the, well, if you can get to GitHub, you can pull down the, the repository. Um, and yeah, I think we are good to get started. Uh, let's see. Where is, there it is. Can we type? I should have picked a different terminal color. Oh, goodness. Hmm. Is that really hard to read? Yeah. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I think if they turn off the lights, it kills the video stream. Oh, they did? Thank you. Um, yeah, so let's start. I'm just going to CD into the repo that I have locally. And um, so, like, what are modules? Well, what, what, what are, if you haven't seen them before, if you haven't heard about them before, what are they used for? They are a really useful tool. They are what makes NixOS happen. So, when you wanna configure a package, when you wanna build a package, when you wanna configure part of your system, uh, how would you do that with Nix? And the, the answer is there's a whole system, a whole module system that Nix uses to do that configuration. Uh, which, wh what you're able to do is create kind of a schema of options and then expose that to your users and they can configure those options however they, not, however they like and it builds 
essentially whatever you want. You can build just simple text files, you can build packages, you can build an operating system with this. And so we're gonna talk about how you construct these modules for yourself so you understand how they work and how to use them. Um, so what is a basic module? Well, at its core, it is uh, a function that takes an attribute set and it returns an attribute set. Uh, hopefully by now, since if you guys were here at the first uh, workshop, you're kind of maybe familiar with some of these terms now. Um, so let's take a look at, there's, there's this one file in the, the first uh, tutorial, a basic module called uh, useless.nix. And there you go. That's a, that's a fantastic <laughs> module. It's valid. It, it, it takes no arguments and it returns an empty attribute set. Um, and as the name implies, it is useless. Uh, so let's, 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 let's skip past that. But th th this, is, this is the core structure. We're gonna build upon this. Um, so let's look at, there's one, I have a file in here called options.nix. There you go. So there's a couple pieces in here. Uh, you can see in, at the top level of the returning attribute set, there's something called options. This is the key name that is used to where you declare all of your options. So if you wanted to have something like, this is something called name, uh, you can see right here, I have something called name. Uh, we use uh, a, a, a function called mkOption. This is the most like kind of generic tool that, within the module system for creating options. And you can pass it in another attribute set with, with different attributes. The most important one is type. So this is gonna set the type that is gonna be type checked by the module system uh, to make sure that whatever you define it uh, in, in the, uh, a value for this later is valid. Um, so you can see I've set type, I've called from lib.types, the str type, which is a string type, a very simple string type. And there you go, that is a simple option. Use MK option, you set a type, and give it some attribute name. Uh, one other th uh, very important thing to point out is uh, the function argument. So now we're not taking nothing, we're taking lib. So lib is one of a few arguments that are automatically provided by the module system. We'll, we'll, we'll look at some of the other ones that are provided later and show you like kind of what, how this all evaluates for you, but you can just assume that you get the standard library from mixed packages. Um, so that's why I'm able to say like lib.mkOption, uh, lib.types.string, those are automatically given to you. The other important thing uh, is these ellipses. So I don't recall if they were covered in the first talk, but uh, this kind of specifies that we're allowed any kind of extra arbitrary arguments. Um, if you don't put this in here, your module's not gonna do very well, so in all of your modules that you define, make sure to include the ellipses, um, because some might take lib, some might take some of the other arguments that we're gonna look at later, but they have to be able to take all of them that the module system's gonna provide, so that's why we, why, that's why we set the ellipses. Okay, so we have one defined, it's called name. Let's take a look at uh, what the configuration uh, looks like. So there's a config.nix in here as well, and so we, we do the same thing, we have our ellipses. We don't need lib this time, we're just gonna, de we're just gonna define the value for it. Um, and so we're gonna use it, we're, the way we're gonna do that is with this other top level attribute called config. Um, and that's all you have to do, you say it's config, it has another attribute set. I'm gonna set name here and it's gonna be Bodie McBoatface for today. Um, and that's the configuration, that's all we have to do for, for, for the option that we've declared. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, I've been using this, these words dec declarations and definitions. So options here on, on the right, its formal name are, is option declarations. And the one for config on the left is option definitions. These are just legacy names, but I just want you to know that I will sometimes use option declaration or option definitions, and they refer to options and config more colloquially. Um, and you'll see that a lot, a lot in, the, in the documentation on, on the MixOS website as well. So, okay, so we've got a declaration, we've got options, we said it's a string type, we've configured it. So how do we, how do we get something out of this? How do we actually like see that, you know, this is all neat, but this is still a Nix. I want something on my terminal, I want something I can touch. Um, so the way, the way we do that, let's just get rid of these and go back to, there's another file called eval.nix that I've set up. So this is not a module, this is just a regular Nix file. Uh, it's gonna take packages because I need access to this function from the standard library called eval modules. 
And the way that this works is that we give it an attribute called modules, and modules takes a list of paths to all of the modules we've declared. And that's it. That's how you get, that's how you do your evaluation. It will handle passing in all those automatically supplied arguments like lib to your modules for you. And it, it returns back an attribute set. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of information in there. For the sake of this, I'm gonna look at the configuration output, the thing that we want to see that like we, we've set that, out, we've declared option, we've configured it, we wanna see that it looks right. So I'm just gonna look at the configuration output. And uh, for the sake of myself and all of you, I've included run scripts in all these lessons, which just, you know, runs nixeval on the file, automatically provides, like, imports next packages and applies it and gives it to the, to the eval.nix file and just formats it nicely in a JSON output so we can look at it. So let's run it. Okay. Buddy McLeod face. Exactly what we wanted. Uh, so this was kind of trivial though. This is a little, a little simple, a little too simple. You know, we, we have an input. It's the same as our output. And we've declared it and defined it in the same space. We, do, we don't have any kind of interdependencies between different options. So let's look at that. Let's look at what we need to do kind of in the next steps. Uh, let's look at something a little bit more useful. So if we go back out and then we go to the next lesson, which should be called option dependencies. Yeah. Well, let's look at uh, actually setting up a couple, or several options. Some we're gonna use as inputs that we're gonna configure and then we're gonna use the last one to actually use the values that we, de that we define for all those options to create a, like a little message for us. So most of these lessons will have like an options, a config, an eval, and a run script. Um, so in our options.nix, let's take a look up here. Okay, so we have some more arguments. I'm gonna talk about config in a sec, but we still have lib and we still have our ellipses. Um, so we have a few more, you can see we have a few more options now. We have a name, we have a title, we have an origin, and we have a greeting. We're gonna use the first three to configure something, to configure what we want a greeting to say. Um, and in this file, we're actually, we're configuring the, the value for greeting right away. We want this, we want this kind of part of like the module that we give to a user. Um, so, how does this work? Well. You can see there's this CFG right here. So let's go back up and look at where CFG is coming from. It's coming from this line, which ultimately comes from config. So config is another one of those arguments that is automatically provided by the module system. It is kind of the lazy uh, ultimate value of the configuration values that you set. So in another file, we'll configure like name, title, and origin, and config will be aware of what those values are. We can then take them and then use them down in greeting. This all just kind of happens, you know, this is, this is the kind of like nice, lazy nature of, of Nix. We don't have to have these immediately available in this file. They can be in another file and we can use them here. Um, just as a, as a note, this config is not the same as this config. This is the configuration that I'm, I'm setting up right now for, this, for these particular option definitions. The config at the top that's part of the module function argument is the, is the final evaluation of all your configurations. And this is, this is why you'll see this a lot if you look into anything that's created within the Nix module system. Um, or on the, sorry, that are like, if you look into any of the options that are on the search.nixos website, you usually see this like config equals config dot something. And for us, like we're just looking at the top level, so I'm just gonna say CFG equals config. It kind of helps mentally separate the idea between like final configuration versus like configuration I'm setting right here. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna say greeting is hello. My name is the configuration value for name. I am a configuration value for title. And I am from configuration value for origin. And let's look at the config. So here I just have to set up, it's similar to what we did before. I'm just gonna accept now I have a config for name, title, and origin, along with these options. And I'm gonna use this, what we did similarly with the eval.nix to combine them together and say evaluate both of these files together. Um, yeah. 
Actually, this is the eval greeting. There's actually two evals in here. This one is eval. And, there's, and, and we'll see really real quick. So let's just exit out of this and run dot shell. Okay. So this is neat. So you can actually see, like, we have the configuration at the bottom. We have the configuration values for our name, and origin, and title, kind of like we just declared in the config.mix file. But look at greeting. Greeting is, it's actually, you know, injecting those configuration values for name, title, and origin into our greeting string. It is a little bit kind of hard to read because it's, you know, spit out from JSON. We're using JQ to try to format it as best we can. Uh, I have included, if we just look at the, there's another eval.nix. There's eval greeting.nix. I only want the greeting output. These are attribute sets, so you can just say, just give me dot greeting. There's another run script to go along with this. There's a run greeting, just points to the run eval greeting that file instead of the regular eval file. But if you just look at that instead, yeah, there you go. That's a nice, that's a nice pretty value. It says, hello, my name is Bodie McBoatface. I'm an autonomous underwater vehicle and I'm from England. These are all very true statements. Um, and yeah, so now, so now instead of just like using the configuration value or the co configuration declaration and just setting the value for the same, you know, same input as same outputs, now we've used three inputs to define what one output should be like. Let me just give a quick pause. Any questions so far? Uh, can you say which instance of Nix packages? Ah, which instance of Nix pack? Uh, which instance of Nix packages does the library that I'm using come by from default? Um, so I'm using Flakes for this whole this whole website. So it's whatever is pinned in my Flake lock file. You mean like, you mean like these ones up here? Line two. No, you can you can t you can omit this. You could you could delete that. Let's see. Actually, let's yeah, let's do this. You can just delete this. And here I'm just going to change these to config. And config and config. That's valid. That'll work. I use it, I use it mentally so I know which ones are which. So I'm, when I'm looking at them, it's like that is my final evaluation. And also you usually see it like um, like I said, when you look in any kind of like NixOS module that's declared in like in the in the repo, they'll usually like try to access, they'll have multiple configs like accessing different layers of the configuration, and it just gives you like a kind of a, a quicker way to get to it. So he was asking in this uh, right here, I'm adding uh, the other one. Okay, and, and uh, let's look at in this one. Yes, yes. So this is this is adding. Uh, yeah, these name, title, and origin are being added to the top level configuration. Yes. I could have taken these. I can do this. I can just do it like that. That's valid. But I'm showing you in a way that's that you kind of like for this something this simple that you would want to architect, like you have an options. You give that to the user, they set the config. And that's why I've kind of separated these things throughout. You see this a lot within like the module system. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to set these. The user wants to set these. You, but you want to define what the greeting's going to be because they, they, want, they want that final output product. So that's, that's why they're set up like that. Okay, did someone? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they all get output. I mean, I think we saw that. Right, they get output together. They all, like that entire config object gets, that's the output, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, you can see, I think, in, in, in these lines. Oh, I can't highlight. Let's go over here. Yeah, and all these. That's the entire configuration. Yeah. And then the second one I just said, like, just give me the greeting output so I can see the, the new lines. We have not talked about that yet. Yeah. Merging, I didn't have, I don't know if there's enough time to talk about merging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like that might make the whole config thing a little clearer. Sure. That's what's happening effectively. Sure. And actually, I, um, I forgot to talk about this in the beginning. I am talking with the documentation team about this. I don't know if you guys have seen, there's one article on module system on nix.dev, which is the current official, like, outside of the manuals documentation. Um, I've talked with the documentation team about bringing this all over. Uh, so if you guys have any feedback, good, bad, positive, critical, whatever, please find me after. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, this could really be helpful for future Nix users. Um, but yeah, merging, uh, the, the, the way that these are structured is to build like one little step at a time. Merging comes after enough foundation has been placed. Um, so now we've got option dependencies. Uh, is there another name for equal sign other than assignment operator? Because if it's not, it's not assignment. <laughs> I don't know that there is one. <laughs> Maybe it's a name. <laughs> Talk to the architecture team. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so let's look at, let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next, uh, do I have anything? No. Um, splitting modules. Okay, so you can imagine, this is the start, but you can imagine as, as you build up, uh, you might have a module, you know, you have a module that gets quite large. Or you might find that you're developing several modules with, you know, option configurations in different places, and you find that you have some code reuse, and you're like, oh, that, that could be like a little, a little piece right on its own, and I can, it'd be nice if I could use the same kind of options in multiple places. And you can do that. There is the third, kind of top level attribute. We've talked about at the top level options, talked about config. And let's look at, um, well, let's look at, some, let's look at some individual files first. So there's, I've, I've taken the kind of the previous lesson and split it up. So now we have a name.nix that just has name. Uh, we have a, let's see, what's the next one? <laughs> title.nix that just has title. You know, this is the, kind of the same stuff we've all, we've all seen before. We're, we're just declaring an option right here but these are all just single ones. And we have an origin.nix. That's an options.nix. How about an origins.nix? There we go. Okay. So how can I combine these all together? Well, imports. So this is the third uh, major uh, attribute that's available kind of at the top level of the, of the, of the module system. Um, so with imports, you just pass it a list and you pass it or you, uh, you give it a list of paths to all the other modules you want to do. And here I've, I've given the path to name, title, and origin, which are all in the same directory. And this is as if I had just declared them all in this file. It's exactly like the same as we saw in the previous lesson. But now, like, I have reuse. Um, and, th and that's basically it. I mean, you can see here I've, I've got my greeting locally defined. I've got the configuration for greeting locally, you know, locally defined here as well. If you look, there should also be a config.nix that has the same configuration as before. Um, and if we run this, we get the same thing. But this is nice. This this allows you to like say like, oh, like I, I've got this, I've got this nice like tight little module. Um, I want to like put it away. I don't want it to be like, you know, in, injected into this code here. I want to be able to use it in multiple places. You can use imports. And you can just pass them, pass their paths. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, so the question is, is like, can, if someone's already defined a configuration value, uh, can you override that? And the answer is yes. Uh, there is a priority system. Uh, it is, I think, one of the last lessons that I want to talk about, and hopefully we can get to it. But yeah, you can. You absolutely can. Yes. Uh, not necessarily. I'm just doing this because that's how the lessons are structured and to be very simple. Um, you know, uh, for this one, let's see, let's take a look at the eval. Ah. If everything's at the top level, then they're pretty much the same. But we're gonna look at some special types called submodules that allow you, like the name, they allow you to define submodules. And sometimes you want to do imports at the submodule level and not at the top level. So. Thank you. Yeah, of course. What's the, uh, the path availability for these for imports? Like, does it have to be in the directory tree of where you're currently referencing? Do they have, are these absolute paths all the time? How does it know what's available to import when and what gets imported? Ah, so if you're just doing, so the question is, is like, what's the path availability for, for these? Just, I'm just repeating it so that people can hear better. Um, what's the path availability uh, for these modules? So if you're working with just like regular Nix stuff, like not talking about Nix OS yet, um, you have to like know what the path is. They have to be generally, I think, relatively available. Um, like all the stuff that I'm doing is like all in the relative directory. Um, you could probably give it an absolute path as well. The only question is, is like if it's not in your repo, yeah. So, I mean, you can do all sorts of cursed things. <laughs> Just don't expect anyone else to do it, use it. Yeah. Um, one thing I'll just touch on, uh, if you're talking about Nix OS modules, you have another special argument, I, th I believe it's called modules path. And that is uh, when you, that is, I think, I believe that's an, another automatically provided attribute that I don't have in the lessons, but it's, it's kind of, it's kind of important to talk about. Um, it will give you a path in the Nix packages repository based off of whatever instance you're using to the, to the, to the directory that has all of the modules in it. So if you, let's say you wanted to extend Nginx or something like that, or extend some other package or some other service, rather than having to know where everything is in Nix packages or like having drilling down from the top level of your Nix packages uh, uh, instance, you can just say modules path and just slash from there. Uh, really, really handy. Um, you can, that I believe is documented on the website, on like the official manuals and you can go look at that. Okay, so splitting modules was pretty simple. We're just doing imports and let's see the next lesson we wanna talk about, ah, arguments. So let's go to options, arguments. So generally, without any kind of conditional logic, if you declare an option, you have to define it when you try to evaluate them. If you try to evaluate an option declaration that doesn't have a definition, in other words, if you have something in options that doesn't have a configuration value, the module system will throw an error at you. That's, I said, without any kind of conditional logic. So there's a couple ways we can do it. One of the ways I wanna show you real quick is with uh, using another automatically provided keyword, options. <laughs> so this is the kind of final, you can think of it as the, like the, the overall, the, the accumulation of all of the options you've declared. Um, and it has a bunch of information in it. Like if you go down inside options and we wanted to look at, like you can say like options.main, it has information about its type, it has information about, um, let's see, what else? If it was defined or not. Uh, let's see, what else kind of stuff do we have? There's a lot of things you can look at that you can uh, find in there. And also, to be similar to config, this options, it's not the same as this options. One is, one is all of the options together. This options right here is just what's local. Um, but 
what I can do. Let's say, let's say I wanted to amend the things that we've done so far in these lessons. Let's say I wanted to give the user the ability to only define some of the things that we've declared. Like I didn't want to, you know, we have name, title, and origin. I don't want to define title. I just want to do name and origin. You can do that. And we can do that because Mix is lazy. So I'm going to do something similar just, just for the sake of my own sanity. I'm going to say ops equals options. And what I'm going to do down in, in my greeting, rather than kind of statically saying like, this is the string and I want you to inject these values in, I'm going to put some conditional logic in. So I'm going to make a list of strings. And so if you haven't seen the optional uh, function before, uh, the first argument is a Boolean. If that Boolean is true, the second argument gets passed in as a list or it gets injected into a list and passed back. If it's false, it returns an empty list. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm generating a list, I'm concatenating all these lists together, and if I define, I'm gonna say options.name, if it's defined, then pass this string along. And if it's not, concatenate an empty list, which should just be nothing. And then I, and I use uh, this other function called concat string sep, which takes a, a separator and then concats a list of strings together for you. So I'm, I'm just building up the same kind of string that we saw previously, but now I don't have to define these options or whichever, any, you know, these options that are the name, title, and config if I don't want to. So let's take a look at a config. Ah, yeah, there we go. So I've just defined a name and title, na sorry, name and origin. No title. Eval is the same. Just pulling in options and config and giving back the config, you know, the greeting from the config output. And the run's gonna be the same. So let's just take a look. Yeah. Doesn't crash. Works. I can go back in here and let's go back to the config. I can take out origin. Oops, not all the way. Just that much. Yeah. Doesn't crash. Works exactly as expected. So if I had done this before um, in the previous lesson where I didn't have those, those conditional conditionals in, the module system would have thrown an error at me. Let's actually go take a look. Here's a config, oh, oh hold on. Let's go back again. Do I have something open? I do. Okay, let's just see what happens real quick. Yeah, you'll see this error message. This is, this is the kind of de facto error message that you will see at the bottom here. If you declare a definition, or if you declare an option, you don't define it. So the option origin is used but not defined. Uh, a little confusing at first, uh, but yeah, essentially what it means is like I, I created an option called origin and I didn't give it a value and now it's complaining. Uh, so if you, yeah, go ahead. Ah, that is a really good question. Let's find out. That is find out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put origin back in. Let's open this options. Let's get rid of yeah. Let's get rid of origin. Let's not import it. Run. Ooh. Oh, I, you know I probably screwed up something there. Hold on. I did, oh, thank you. I did delete the end of string. Yeah, does not exist. Yeah, so they go hand in hand without any conditional logic. That option, yeah, that option has not been declared yet. Yeah. And yeah, and it even tells you where you messed up, <laughs> which is really nice. It's like you messed up right here in this config file. Oh, I guess you guys can't see that. Right there. So, so yeah. So make sure that there's, you know, it'll tell you right away. It doesn't take that long to figure out that you've messed something up. But uh, those tools are there. Just that, you know, recognize that the error messages might not necessarily be 
what you might have expected, like you've defined something here, but you didn't declare it, or you declared something, you didn't define it. Those, those, these are kind of the, the translations. This option origin does not exist. It's not declared. Okay. So we've got that. Okay. So most, so far all of these have just been kind of contained within uh, the Nix language, strictly within you know, the module system and just extending on the Nix language. I try to keep it that as much in here as possible so that you're kind of always touching something, something that's always familiar or something that I didn't want to add like packages or external things where you have to like pick up something new like you know, some API or Nginx or like some, some, some service that most of you might, uh, some people not, might not be familiar with. We're gonna take a little step out and we're gonna use packages for something. So uh, let's go over to, let's just make sure I didn't, okay, nothing's, nothing's still there, okay. Let's look at extra arguments. So uh, we've talked about things that are automatic, automatically provided so far, which are lib, options, and config. Packages, if you're just writing Nix, Nix, like standard, like Nix level modules, not Nix OS modules, you don't get packages for free. If you're writing a Nix OS module, you do. Um, but I'm writing, I'm writing just, just something really simple that just puts out strings, so I don't get packages for free. So how do I get access to it? Well, first, I'm gonna assume that I do get it. I'm gonna call it packages. Um, and I, I'm gonna use it. So what I'm, I'm doing here is still similar to what we've done before. I'm gonna provide it a name and a greeting this time, just two. The name is gonna be my kind of input and greeting is what I'm gonna see in the output. And I've, I've configured this kind of silly little thing that uses cowsay, shoves the name into cowsay, and then spits it out to like a text file that I, we can just cat out and look at later. Don't worry about the details for all this. This is just kind of stuff that I had to do to make sure that I could integrate it all with the, the lessons site and the build, um, because this whole site is built with Nix um, and verifies that everything runs before the site can deploy. So it's, this isn't the way that you would normally like write something like this, but I just did it for the sake of uh, having it work for my, my CI. But the short is, name goes in, Kausei says hello name. But I need to give it packages somehow. We're not gonna find that a config. Config just does name, the way that I'm doing it right now. So let's take a look at eval, because the way that packages are provided, you need, you at least need access to like packages somewhere, like you need to pass that in. And since I know previously that when I was, when we were looking at our eval files that were just regular Nix files and I was using the run scripts to provide packages to it, I know that I have packages available there. Um, similarly, this is a little bit different because now we're not gonna use Nix eval, we're gonna use Nix build for this particular example. Um, I needed a pu more pure version of Nix packages available. So don't worry too much, this is just a purity thing. Just know that right now, at the top level of my eval file, I have packages. And this, this is unfortunately not documented too well. I believe the only place that this is actually fully documented is in the source code. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the documentation team is working on it, I promise. Um, they're doing a great job. But within config, so within that, that same config that we were, uh, actually this is, this, is not the, this is not the top level config, this is like the regular module attribute config. There's a kind of pseudo, you know, pseudo underscore, uh, pseudo hidden uh, argument called underscore module. Within that, there's another attribute called args. And args, you can pass it arbitrary things that you want to be provided to your module system. So I'm gonna say in config.module.args, inherit packages or packages equals packages, right? And this is what allows me to pass in anything that I want. So let's say you were building up some library. Let's say you had some really elaborate module that had like your own library called mylib and you had all these cool functions in there. If you had that available here, I could just say like, and mylib, you know? And then I could go over to my, um, to my options file and say like, oh, now I have access to mylib. Since I actually have these defines, I'm gonna undo that real quick before this thing breaks. Um, but yeah, you can, you can pass in arbitrary things in right through, right through that argument right there. If you look in, I didn't, I don't have it in the lessons yet. Um, you can also look in the documentation for something called special args. Um, it is another way to do it because 
this, this particular way has some limitations. It is the more recommended way, but if you run into those limitations, special args is there as a backup. Um, look in, I think it's the Nix may, no, Nix packages manual or the Nix OS manual for the documentation for special args. Um, but yeah, now we have packages. I've, well, at least I, I'm telling you I do. I've, I've, tried to, I've tried to apply or get, make it available. Um, so if I look at my run file real quick, this is just gonna be a, a oh, that is not it. Uh, run.shell or build.shell, sorry, this is a build file. Just runs Nix build on the eval.nix file. If we try to build it, it might take a little while, okay. It gives us a result. If we look out here, there's something in result. And if I cat that out, it's calte. It says hello, but in the code face. Um, and that's it. So yeah, so this is how you can, you can give anything you want to the module system that you provide. Yes. Um, I don't, let me see if I understand. So like, so yeah, like you're saying, like when you look at, when you go to like a, the source code that builds a, a for, a for the derivation for a particular package, usually you see like as a function argument, but you don't usually see like module options in there. Um, But are those Nix OS options or are they just like function arguments? No, the Nix package derivation often employ that. The module system? No, oh, not module, it's functional input arguments. Ah, but right. But it could be module, so what's the choice here, why do you pick one or the other? I think generally for, for things in Nix packages, you just want to use simple functional arguments, you don't want to use the module system. I don't think I've ever seen something from Nix packages that uses the, uses the module system. Generally, where you see options is for Nix OS. When you want to configure services. Is that, is, that is not a mistake. Started using what recently? Really, okay. Okay, that's, so somebody just said that uh, recently people have started using the module system for packages. Cool. The typing is nice. Okay, so this covers the basics. This is just enough to kind of get you started. Um, but let's continue on. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit more about MK option. That was that, that generic option builder that we had. Some of the other things that are available for us. Let's see, I believe this is, let's go to default value. Okay. So doing all this is really nice. Um, you saw in some of the previous exam or lessons that we had, we could configure um, a value for things like, things like greeting in the same thing that we had our option declarations, which is really nice. There's also another attribute that is available from MK option that we can use to set default values. You know, just just as a thing, they are completely overridable, but they they make you know they make your users' lives easier if if you kind of know what the faults they might like. So here's a really simple module uh, in my options.nix file. I have an option called a, which is integer, b, which is integer, and sum, which is integer. And the configuration for sum is a plus b. Simple. But I've added a little default value here for, for uh, which one's this, for B. And that's it. Um, this uses the priority system. We will talk about that in a bit, but uh, this has essentially like the lowest priority possible that within the module system. Uh, this is the most overridable thing, easiest to override, and 
but is available if the user wants to use the default values. So let's take a look at a config, just a regular config. Let's see, let's do that and let's do that. So in this configuration, I've only set a value for A. So I expect that it will use the, value, the default value for B, which is two, A is three, and give me a sum of five. So let's take a look. So run.shell, perfect, okay. So what do I need to do to override it? Well, there's another configuration file in here called config-override, and that's it. Just say B equals four. B equals whatever, equals, screw that, 40. And there's a run override in here as well to make, to help you. And there you go, 40 plus three, 43. These, these the next couple ones are, are fairly quick by, by some of the other ones, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, you could totally do that. Would it get overridden by the result and the other cost section? Yeah. <laughs> you have the power to do whatever cursed things you want. <laughs> 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 but not these. These these are all these are all just example files. But I could have defined it in another file. I could have defined it in like Somewhere, somewhere it has to be defined. I just set these up as kind of like the way that like I have an option that I would provide as a API to a user and then like what they would have in their config.nix file to configure those options. But yeah, like we've seen with like imports, um, like we saw, you know, we, you can split these files up as much as you want. Just how readable do you want them to be? Um, any other things? No, that's a pretty simple one. Uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about some of the other attributes that are involved with documentation. Um, so if we go over, there is option documentation, directory. Okay, there's a couple other really handy attributes. Um, this, if you ever start you know, building up a project that uses the module system and you wanna like throw it up on a static site with all of your options like you've seen with like the home manager uh, talk that was earlier um, or if you know you see on like the, the search for uh, search, search.nixos.org if you look at the options tab you can see all the options that are available for NixOS. Um, there's a couple of extra attributes that are help with documentation. So one of them is called description and one of them is called example. So description is like it sounds, you just can provide it text, sentences, paragraphs, um, to just describe what this option does. Please be thorough. <laughs> some, as you, as you might have noticed, some of them are not super well documented. The more information you give to the user, the more they can understand, the better. Um, an example is just, um, just another example. This, this, you know, strings are kind of simple, but like we'll look at some, some extra types and like why you might want to put an example in to kind of show the, the structure of what your option can look like. Um, and all of these, if you look at the outputs for documentation, will be included. So let's take a look real quick. Um, I don't have a config this time. We're not, we're not caring about config. Actually, let's see, there's, is there a config? No. What else is here? There's a docs. Yeah. So now we're gonna use some new functions. So when, generally, when you're trying to create documentation for all these options that you, uh, that you've created, you don't need to have the config. Um, it's the wonderful laziness of Nix that allows you to do things like this. Uh, but you're gonna probably wanna use the, this function called NixOS options doc. So this takes an attribute set and one of the, option, one of the uh, attributes for this is options. And, and here we're gonna pass in the evaluated options options attribute. So, so this, this eval options is the same kind of eval options that we've been using before, where normally we had our config.nix right here next to options.nix, but we don't need config right now. We're just, we, we are not, we're actually fully evaluating these things. We're just gonna look at um, the options output. 
So yeah, so we can take the evaluated options, we can look at the options. This line right here uh, is up to you if you want to implement it. Uh, the generated documentation includes all of the documentation for that little hidden underscore module thing that we saw earlier when we passed in packages. It doesn't really generally add a lot of value. So for the stuff that I generate, when I build documentation for my modules, I remove it and it just cleans up, cleans up your documentation a whole bunch. Um, if you're using it in really cool ways that it's meaningful to leave it in there, feel free to leave it in there. Um, when you're writing your first module, you can probably get rid of it. Um, and yeah, uh, so, the, so the function NixOS options doc provides a couple of different outputs. Uh, one sec. It provides an, a JSON output, it provides a ASCII doc, and it provides a common mark output. And maybe one more, but I think that's it. Um, so we're gonna look at the common mark output. Yes? Sure, I'll, I'll build it and then we'll build it without that line and we'll see what happens. Um, so let's see, actually I think I already have it built. But you know, let's build it just in case. Okay, it built, it built really quickly. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. Okay, so this is, this is the common mark output. So it's gonna look like markdown. Uh, but you can see right here at the very top is the name of my option which was also name. Uh, the description for it, which was a name for a user, the type, which was a string type, its default value, which in this case was empty, an example, which I called Bodie McBoatface, and then you're also gonna have this declared by, which is actually gonna show you where, basically a link to your system, where, was, where, where this uh, option, which file was declared in. Um, this is maybe less handy generally for uh, things on your system, Definitely handy when you're looking at NixOS options because it tells you where in the repository it's defined, or it's declared, I should say. Exactly. So you can do some really nice string manipulation. Um, for some of this documentation I've generated, I will actually look at the JSON output and create my own common mark output, which is not terribly hard. Um, you can go look and see how this is generated in the in. Next packages repository, and I kind of just took that, massaged it a little bit, and made it my own flavor. Another question? Thinking? What will evaluate that doc build type? So, can I run the function I'm documenting and assert its output in the doc? Can I run it? Can you say that again? Like, is that in the namespace? Like, if I'm documenting some other thing and I assert on its value, like do something with it in the doc string, but in the doc build, they can fail the build. Let, let me answer it this way. Maybe, maybe this answers your question. So when I build this site, I take in all these next files, I evaluate them, and I inject them into the Markdown lesson source code, and they, that's what builds the site. That's how I know that all of these work. So is that, is that answering your question? Okay, great. <laughs> um, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's answer this other, the other question we had earlier. Um, what happens? Hey, where did it go? Oh, uh, no, sorry. Docs, yes. Options equals eval option dot. Okay. Build. Let's see what this looks like. Actually, let's look at it in less because it's probably gonna be big. There you go. Actually, if you wanted a quick access to the documentation for modules, which I said was in the source code, you could do this. <laughs> <laughs> this will give you some of it, at least. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, this is we're, we're still, we're still, wait, oh wait, here we are, here we are. Now we're at, now we're at, at, at our stuff, but we had to get past all of this. So it's, it's already bigger than 
what we had for a single option. And if we had a lot of options, yeah, it's not, it's the percentage goes way down, but um, generally users don't need to know um, or care. Unless, and, you know, unless you get to more advanced things. Um, but if, they, if you're already in the advanced stuff, you know that exists and it's always there. So you don't really need to document it. Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about documentation and try to help you guys avoid uh, a potential pitfall which you can run into. Not the biggest pitfall, but just um, some funny things happen when uh, when we try to use a default value that's a package or something that's not like a simple type, like a string or an integer or a list. So we've got a, we've got a new options.next file here. Ah, so this one is using packages again. We already know how to pass that in. That's great. Um, and we're gonna, we're creating a new option called random package. So random package, um, its type isn't string anymore. It's, it's uh, from the typing system. It's a package type. Um, it's default value, we're gonna use the hello package. Um, its description is a random package and the example is gonna be the calce package. So basically saying like, just give me a random package. It doesn't really matter. We're not doing anything with this. We're only kind of, this is just an exercise to look at what does the documentation look like when we try to build documentation with these values. So the docs file is exactly the same. Um, the regular docs.next, there's a fixed version of this, but we'll look at that in a sec. So let's look at what happens when we build all this. So if we uh, build docs.shell, and let's look at the result. Okay, so yeah, we've got, um, we've got our title, uh, which is random, or the, the, the heading of this, this output is random package, which was the name of our, of our option. Description was a random package. Type is package. But look at the default and examples. They're derivations. That's weird, I mean, it says, that isn't how we configured it, right? It was package.hello or package.cause. But this is, this, is, this is the kind of problem, like the, the, the string output of a package is this. So how do we fix these kinds of things? Because we don't, we don't wanna give this to our user and be like, oh, like, what is, what, what is, that, what is that, where does that come from? Um, so, instead of that, let's look at, there's another docs file. Fixed, oh sorry, not the doc. Uh, options fixed. So there's a couple functions that are here that are really handy. One of them, um, well actually, first before we talk about the functions, there's another attribute, default text. So default has to be left alone. Default is the default value that the module system will use. But you use default text for your documentation if you need to do these kinds of things where you need to fix up, like if you're using a package or some other kind of derivation. Um, so in default text, what we can do is say, put packages.hello in a string and pass it to literal expression. So this will extract the kind of code within the string with outside of it and put that in a code block for you within your documentation. Because if you didn't include literal expression, it would be a string. And we don't wanna say, put a package in string quotes, we wanna say, Packages dot hello. You need something? What's up? Yeah, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Pierre's got it. Pausing for now. So. Hello. So, so real quick announcement. Um, so since everything kind of got, like got shifted this morning, the next talk will start. The next talk will start at uh, three thirty, not right now. So you still have time. There's a bunch of people in here for the next talk. You're gonna get in, it's fine. But we are running like half an hour behind. So I just wanted to call that out so you still have time to go use the restroom and whatever. Good? Or you can stay. Yeah, you, you can stay. That's also totally fine. <laughs> yeah, you should stay. Oh, you can go back to Pierre. He might, he might, I might need to him. Okay, so one other function that's really handy uh, but not necessary um, unless you're writing like a lot of, if you have like a lot of things that you want to write for your example, like if you have a really convoluted thing and it's better to maybe explain uh, an example rather than trying to write out what an example could look like, you can use uh, this other function called literal MD or literal markdown. Um, and you can write markdown inside of your string now. And that'll just be injected 
as is into your documentation. So you can see here I'm saying like any italicized random boldface package. And it should show up like that. It, it should just basically just translate directly into the markdown file. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so let's see. We got default text for overriding the default value text as, as some sort of text value. We've got a literal expression when we wanna use things like from packages. Um, and we've also got literal MD for when we just wanna write markdown. Um, I think, I believe literal MD is generally used for example, and either def default.txt or description. Uh, check the documentation, I don't remember. I think if you put it in the wrong one, it might fail. You'll find out. Um, but so we've got it. We've got another uh, build file that looks at. Let's see where is it? Yeah, we have build box fixed um, to build these locks, but with all these things that we have fixes now. So let's take a look at the result for this. Okay, look at look at the bottom. We have our default, and we have our example, and it doesn't say derivation anymore. It says packages dot hello. Exactly what we wanted. Exactly what we said. Um, you know, if you assume that they had the package namespace available, like just kind of splatter out, you could just say hello, saying like that's a package. Uh, but it's, you know, it's kind of nice to say like this comes from packages, so I'm saying packages are hello. And our example is any random package with the markdown, uh, mod markdown modifiers already injected in there. Um, yeah, so. That I think is all we want to talk about about MKB options and documentation. Any questions before we move on? Yeah. So when you fixed it, you took out the cow today? Um, this is a totally new one. Oh, wait, did I, did I take out the cow today? Yeah, like in your example, you can see it was like, can you still actually do the, uh, like, is some package just generating text that you pass to example in the fixed oh. version? This, this, was just, this was just to show that like, I, instead, of, instead of having like actual expression, I can just throw like a description in there. Is that part of the fix? It's not part of the fix. I could have used literal expression the same I did for, um, for the default text. Okay. But I just wanted to show you that I didn't want to have like a third example in here. I just want to show you. Default text is the fix. Default text is the, the fix for showing what, default, what the default value looks like in the documentation. But example, is, example doesn't get evaluated. It's just for documentation purposes. Yeah. No more hands. Okay. Moving on. Um, so we're going to quickly talk about some really simple types because I want to talk about submodules. I think we have enough time for all that. Um, so if we go to basic types, just wanted to show you guys some more basic types that we can look at. Um, so look, we've looked at string. We've looked at um, integer, we've looked at package, and there's the kind of normal set of types that you would normally expect from a typing system. So we've got Booleans, <clears throat> we've got enumerated values, we've got integers, we've got strings. If we look at just a simple configuration for all that, you can see like I have an example bool is true, example integer is 42, example enum is left, which is one of the values in the list that's provided to um, the enum type. By the way, that is how you declare the enumerated values is you pass in a list of all the enumerations you want to the enum type and it will handle that for you. An example string is hello. If we run this, the evaluation for this, we get exactly what we want. No, but nothing, nothing surprising there. Let's go to the compose types. So these are a little bit more interesting. Eh, that's not the right file. Options, more trivial. So we can build things of things. So compose types like we have list of uh, at this very top one. So exam example list of, its type is a list of integers. I can have an attribute set of strings. I can have null or Boolean. So this can, can you can either give it null or a Boolean value. <clears throat> I can have, there's a one that's really nice, it's called either. So it could be either string or int. Um, another really nice one of it's a one of, so it can be so you give it a list of all the types that you want it to be able to be, so it could be uh, either a string, an integer, or a bool. And similarly, we can configure these ones. We'll look at the configuration trivial. And if I evaluate this, 
it's the same thing as before. It evaluates, it, it verifies. But you can see like we have our list of integers, we have our attribute set of strings. This one was the example that could have been null or boolean. For this case, I set it to true. Um, either was, it could have been string or integer. Um, and like the text says, I could have been integer. This example one of could have been string integer or boolean. I could have been either one of those three. If we run this, run trivial, we get a bunch of things. You can nest these pretty deeply. Um, yeah, a list of one of string integer or boolean. Um, so you're basically creating like, I could have a list that has, you know, the first element's a, f a string, the next element's an integer, the next element's a bool, the next element's a bool. Um, attributes of null or string, so I can have an attribute set where the values are either null types or string types. Um, attributes of a list of either integer strings, and then like the last one, I'm not gonna go through all that. Like, you can get some really, really crazy stuff and, and create some really interesting architectures and structures. And the, you know, look at the configuration for that. And this all works. This all evaluates. Um, if you look at run nested, you get some, you get a big, big output. Okay, so why do all that? Well, there are other ways to do things like this. And this is where we're gonna start talking about submodules. So rather than kind of creating these complicated um, structures that might be hard to parse, might be hard to debug, might be hard for your users to even understand, there's a better way. Um, so let's go over to the submodules lesson. Oops. Submodule, yeah. And this is arguably one of the most powerful types in the whole typing system, is the ability to create modules that go inside of other modules. Um, so actually, before we look at the options.mx, let's go look at the character.mx. This will look really familiar. I have an options of name, title, and origin. I have a greeting, and I have a greeting configuration that is conditionally dependent on whether name, title, or origin are present. This is the same thing we saw when we looked at the conditional, um, using the options argument to conditionally set what the greeting would look like. But this is all contained within its own file now. It's called character.nix. And if we go look at options, let's go look at the options file. We're creating a new option in this file called characters. And its type is a list of submodule and a path to characters.nix. So now I can create kind of arbitrarily many characters as I want, and they'll all be contained within this list. The way that you configure sub options, think of options that are very adder-like, so um, let's just take a look at the configuration so we can see what this looks like. And we'll keep this up, actually. Yes, yeah, config. Right, so here's my character. Remember, it was gonna be a list of, and it's a list of submodules. So the things that we have exposed are name, origin, and title. So the first one is gonna be Bodie McBuckface, its origin from England. And then the second one's gonna be me. Uh, title is a Nix enthusiast from the USA. And now I've, this is, this is, this is kind of what, we, what you, somebody had a question earlier about imports. This is where you would want to use imports when you're using them for a submodule. Because then it's not the same thing as importing them at the top level anymore. Um, yeah, and then for the greeting output, basically what I'm gonna do is extract the greetings from every single, uh, every single configuration that I have, concatenate them all in a string and have a, bun a, big, a big greeting for everyone that I've configured. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at, oops, where am I? Let's take a look at the run. Oh, there we go. We have hello from Bodie McBoatface, we have hello from me. Um, but it's, I don't know if I can stress this enough, this is, this is so absolutely powerful, because now I can, I can have a character, and you know, I can, for each character, let's say, like, let's say you wanted to go like a video game route, like I could create like a job system or something like that, and job could be its own module, and then that could be imported into the character module, so you could have, 
arbitrary and that's the thing, but this has a lot more structure. When you generate the documentation for this, it's a lot easier to read, it's a lot easier to parse. Um, so get familiar with some modules. Um, they're really, really handy. Okay, any, this is the big one, so any questions before we move on? Yes? You go, I, you know, I haven't played with trying to go up a level, because I know you can go down if you're aware of what's below you. Um, so, so in within character.nix, if I, this configuration that I have right here, it, you know, you can, you know, it's nested underneath like my top level options. It's here, but that config is going to refer to like locally myself. I don't know if there's a way to drill up, unless you like override the the fault, like if you try to like import the character or do something strange. Um, but you are able to, like if we looked at the options.x, it is aware of what's below it. So if you, with attributes it gets, like well, let's see, with lists you, you, can, you can go through some indexing and stuff like that. If, if you're doing like an adders of characters, it might get a little dicey because you don't know what the end user is gonna set the value for the names. But I guess you could still iterate over the adder values. Um, but yeah, so, so, so this, so the options because it's above is, it's config is aware of, of some module below, but I don't, not sure if, if character can be aware of its parents module system. Pierre, do you know anything about, nothing? Okay. Somebody else I thought, I thought I saw, was that good? Okay. Anybody else? I thought I saw him. What's up? Okay. Oh, okay. Did somebody else have a question? Okay. Um, I believe the last thing we're gonna talk about, and we're running out of time, so this is a good thing it's the last thing, is priorities. Okay, so this goes back all the way back to the beginning when we were talking about overriding things. So let's take, okay, what'd you find? Mm. Uh, you can also do a type which is submodule with and pass it as separate. Yes, there are some other functions that we don't have time to cover. There are other ways to do submodules. We did it the most simple way, which is using the submodule type. There is another function called submodule with, which is what I think you're looking at. It exposes a lot more arguments that you can use to pass more arbitrary arguments to your submodules. That's documented pretty well in the, on the manuals. Um, check that out if you want to look at other ways it's really handy, I've used it before and it's super powerful. Um, but yeah, let's see what we have here, okay. Okay, so uh, default values plus priorities plus overriding things. So um, we looked at before using the default value inside of MK option. So we, you know, instead of having it like you can say that like, there's a default value here, we have like a default value of default equals something. Um, deep within the module code, there is a priority system. And anything that's defined here within, within MK option as a default value um, has a priority of 1500. The lower the priority, the higher the precedence or the more preferred it is. Um, so 1500 is basically like anything will override it. There are, there are different um, functions uh, that we can use to kind of uh, change the, the, the priority that we're setting for a particular option, such as uh, this one. So if you, if you do something within config using like lib.mk uh, MK default, it will have a priority of 1000. So it'll automatically override this one because it's 1500. If you don't use MK default and just do it like this, sneakily, the module system will give this a priority of 100. So even, even and, and, and the kind of idea behind that is that like, sometimes you need to like create your default values in config and not within the option itself. Um, and so they created like kind of a secondary function. So that's why, you know, this is 1500, 
if you use MK default, it's a thousand. But like generally, users don't use MK default. This is usually when you're like creating a modules for someone else to use. When you're doing it like this, it has even higher precedence over like a, 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 a predefined module. So this is what users would use. Um, if someone else, I think someone else had earlier asked, like, if someone else had like done this, but then you wanted to override that even further, well, there is one called MK Force, and it has a priority of 10, uh, which is, I believe, the lowest one that's kind of defaultly available. Um, if you want to set up more, um, there is, I believe, something called MK override. The first argument that you pass it is an integer, which is gonna be its priority. The second one is, is like the content you would provide it like the string value here. So like I could say like, uh, let's see, lib.mk override, and then one, like beat that. Like no, nothing, nothing, I don't know if you can go negative with the values. Um, I guess you could say like zero. Um, but like you can, you can essentially just create kind of any kind of priority level that you want for a particular option. If you're doing this for things you want to expose to the user and then you actually want them to configure it, don't do this. <laughs> uh, either use MK default or, or put it in here. Um, everything past that, um, like MK force, uh, is used or just like not even, not even using any function, just conf uh, configuring it in the config attribute is generally used for the user. Um, yeah, so let's just take a look real quick. So we've we've got our we've got our option here. Um, we have a config. Uh, let's see, maybe we don't have a config. We have. Oh right. We just have this one. This one's already got, got a config within it. Okay, no big deal. Uh, let's take a look at the eval file. Since we, since the, the the one module that we have has both the option and the declaration definition, we don't need anything other than that options file. And so then, if we run that, we're going to get body mcbuff face. Remember that was uh, this value right here. Okay. So just just to kind of push it forward to like really show you that like yes, you can override things. There are some. Let's see. Ah, then it will complain. Yes. So you can see this one, I'm not using MK default. This is just configuration value. Recall this one had a priority of 100, whereas MK default had a priority of 1,000. We expect this one to, to supersede the previous value. So what was that called? A boat overridden. Okay, so if we run, run override, we get exactly that. There's one more, um, oh, sorry. The way that that was being used, there's another eval file called override where it pulls in that option file and the override. The last one we're gonna look at is uh, force, I think? Yeah, so force is gonna use MK force, which we call out a priority of 10. And then we have another eval file called eval force, which uses all three. And you can use all three, but it, it's gonna pick the one that has the lowest priority. Yes? MK force is priority 50. 50? Yes. Is, is there one that's... Okay, sorry, what was the name of the one that has 10? Make VM override. Make VM override, okay. Sorry, so corrections, thank you for that. Um, apparently, uh, MK Force has a priority at 50, not 10. Yes, all the way in the back. Nope. It doesn't, or not overriding. It's not important at all. By design. Um, and then if we look at the run for M Force, a forced vote. There you go. Um, let's take a look at real quick. What happens if I? Uh, what happens if I have them at the same level? I believe that should just be run. Mm, oh, let's look at actually. No, run override. I believe. There you go. So the option name has conflicting definition values. And you can actually, it nicely gives you a, a path to each one of those files, a boat overridden and Bodie Mac boat face conflict because they have um, the same priority and the STR type cannot be merged. Unfortunately, we don't have a time to get into merging, but if you continue looking at the documentation for this, there are types that can be merged. Attribute sets you can have multiple definitions for. 
I believe certain types of lists, I don't know if all lists can be merged. It should absolutely say on the Nix packages documentation whether or not it can be merged. I think the default list one cannot. Um, yeah. Questions? in the source code. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Okay. Oh, they actually have it. Because I found it in the source code. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's all the things that I had planned. Is there any more questions before we wrap up and prepare for the next session? Yes. And not just systemd, but basically anything, everything within NixOS is module configured. Yeah. Um, so actually, I do want to point out, if we look at, yeah, let's go, let's see, where, where do we want to go? Seven, I want to go eight. Oh, I don't want to go eight? Yeah, I do. Uh, let's go here. Um, Nix.dev. So this is, the, the official documentation. So the question was asked about like more practical things. Um, these lessons were created with the idea of keeping you within the Nix system, not exposing you to too many other things that might add some complexity. But if you go here, you should have enough information now to read. Uh, there's this article called Module System Deep Dive written by Infinisil, um, which is one of the maintainers for the module system, also lead of the, of the architecture team. Um, here they create a set of modules to interact with Google's Maps API. They configure some options for like zoom and scale, and they show you like, they, it's not like kind of split up in mind, they actually start from like nothing, that kind of useless.nix, like empty attribute set, and build up all the way to a fully fledged module system. Um, if you're interested in like kind of the thought process for someone who does a lot of Nix, uh, I highly recommend reading this article. It is also where I pulled a lot of good information from, um, and it is the, outside of the manuals is the only other official documentation on the module system um, that you can go read up on. Um, so that's at nix.dev and module system deep dive. Anybody else? What's that? Oh, sorry, right. Sorry, can you speak up? It's a little hard to hear you. Trade off, uh, main trade off of the module system. Just writing a package or a function? Well, um, you don't get type checking. You don't get type checking. That's, that's one of the major trade offs. You know, like users can just inject arbitrary things into the arguments of a function if you're having a regular, like, kind of package that you would. Oh, the other way. Um, like, why would you want to pick up using like just a function package versus uh, the, using the whole module system? Um, simplicity. It's a lot. It's a lot quicker and simpler to write a, uh, something like that. Um, and the real question is, is, do you need all of this? Um, I don't know, that would probably be a good question for someone who's committed a lot more to Nix packages. I've only made one, so. <laughs> we good? No more hands? Okay, thank you.